We just got the first 15 minutes of Zack Snyder's upcoming Army of the Dead. Let's break it down. So in this video we're just going to break this down, I'll give you my initial thoughts and reactions to the first 15 minutes of Army of the Dead and try and go over things that you might have missed as I've found something very very interesting right off the bat. So the film opens with Area 51, this convoy called the Four Horsemen, a codename for them, leaving the base uh, in the Nevada desert, carrying a very precious cargo, and as we all know, that cargo is Zeus, the first alpha zombie, and the zombie who's going to become king of the army of the dead. As we see this convoy leaving uh, Area 51 though, I'm just going to tell you all, look at the sky, look up to the top right, uh, just near this floodlight here, there's two very bright lights in the sky, and as this scene progresses, we actually come down to this soldier here who is standing uh, by the outpost, and these lights kind of pulse a little bit, and then one actually shoots off up the way, straight up, and when it shoots off we actually hear a little crack of thunder in the audio as well, and then the other one kind of shoots forward and then up. I mean, this is UFOs, we've got UFOs hovering over Area 51 as an alpha zombie is being transported out of there, and as I've pointed out before in the past, in the previous trailers, we've seen zombies with glowing blue eyes, so I'm pretty confident in saying now, it's pretty much confirmed that aliens are going to play a part in Army of the Dead. Are they keeping tabs on something they've created and sent to Earth to mess with us? What's going on here? Are they in cahoots with the government? You know, have they got a deal with the officials at Area 51 to see how this thing progresses? Because we do know Zeus is a soldier, he's got dog tags, he's got the soldier cut. Uh, so they've definitely been testing on him, we'll get more on that later. But yeah, why are these UFOs watching over this convoy, uh, you know, taking this alpha zombie away? And where do you think they're taking Zeus to? If he's in this secure base, where are they transferring him to? Where could be more secure than Area 51? Anyway, moving on, as we see the convoy move on out, we then see this happy couple celebrating getting married in Vegas. And as you do, uh, you know, the wife, uh, <laughs> so the, the newlyweds, they get a little bit excited and uh, she decides that she wants to uh, celebrate with a post-marital BJ. And it is this post-marital BJ that actually kicks off the zombie outbreak in Army of the Dead. Anyway, as this man's is getting head, these two soldiers are having a little yarn in this convoy. You know, they're kind of making Indiana Jones references and one of them's trying to bait it out of the other one to, you know, tell them that they're, you know, transporting aliens somewhere. And the dialogue, I have to say, was pretty poor and was pretty cheesy and the delivery was pretty awful. It wasn't that funny and I just wasn't feeling that kind of squaddy banter, do you know what I mean? It's something that we got in Aliens, it was perfect, it's something we've had in Dog Soldiers, that, you know, a military dialogue, I feel like some people get it, but just here, it just wasn't captured, it just fell off, and to me, this whole opening scene before the opening credits kind of feels like an SCP short film that you'd find on YouTube, like a kind of low-budget horror short, and that really hurts me to say because I am really looking forward to this movie. Don't get me wrong, the opening 15 minutes I think are still decent. It's just a very, very mixed bag. And my biggest complaint was the dialogue and the acting from the soldiers. Anyway, as we see the convoy continue on as the soldiers talk about what they could be carrying and the fact they actually just spell out to us that they're coming from Area 51 with what could be an alien, it's like... We all know, like, we, where the audience can put two and two together, we know that if there's a base out in the Nevada desert, it's probably going to be Area 51. But hey, you know, the dialogue was poor, let's be honest. But anyway, these newlyweds come speeding down, the guy's obviously not paying attention, he's got other things on his mind, and they collide with the convoy, sending their car and the truck into flames, and the payload flying. The rest of the convoy all kind of veer off and get out of their vehicles and very lackadaisical, uh, they call it in back to home base and there's real no urgency at all in these soldiers and the woman on the radio actually has to remind him about the payload, she says what about the payload and he kind of goes oh, oh the payload and it's like mate that was your mission. 
and your missions just went tits up and you're telling me you've forgotten about it? That was just fucking stupid, man. Like, this dialogue between these soldiers and the people back at the base, it was just so off and just felt so weird and forced. I just really did not like it. In saying this though, we do get some nice visuals of when the soldiers start to creep in towards that payload. As they say, it's compromised and the door opens. We get this real nice shot looking out from... uh, sort of safe, it was almost like Zeus was in a safe himself, Uh, the door flies open, we see the soldiers coming towards it and we are seeing it from like Zeus's point of view and that was a really cool shot, I'm still not too sure about this green lens being used in every single you know shot of the whole movie, the whole movie I think they used this dream lens for, I feel like at some points it's going to get annoying and too out of focus, but I do quite like the very shallow depth of field in uh, some of the shots here. Some of the shots of the soldiers we get are real nice, they feel real claustrophobic, and they blur out the backgrounds, so when Zeus is running about in the background you don't really see him uh, in a like full still picture, which is cool because he is so fast and so athletic that it kind of hides him even more and makes him even scarier and you just feel like these soldiers have even less of a chance. But Judy's still out on that lens, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the movie looks. Anyway, long story short, Zeus breaks out, you know, he comes out, bites this guy in the neck, then moves on to the rest of them. And this guy, who just seems like an absolute shite soldier, just watches on as his mates get absolutely tore apart. Uh, Zeus looks very athletic, very fast, very strong as he, like, Superman punches one of them. He looks like a fucking UFC cage fighter on speed. He just looks insane. And I liked seeing that raw power and aggression from him. Also, the sound design coming from the zombies and this sounds very cool in certain shots uh, and we'll see later on it's very invasion of the body snatchers and I really like that also a lovely little shot here of Zeus standing up in the flames you know foreshadowing all the destruction he is just about to cause Then the two shitey soldiers that we have left run about 10 feet and one of them reckons that they've gone far enough. Mate, did you see how fast that thing was moving? Anyway, Zeus catches up with them because, you know, he's just over that hill, uh, rips one of their jaws off, then picks the other one up and bites his neck. And we actually see him turn. He's the guy we saw turning in the last trailer. He's got those red and yellow eyes that the alphas have. And as we know, if Zeus bites you, you become an alpha. But if one of these guys bites you, you'll become a shambler. That's why there's more shamblers than alphas, because you have to be bit by Zeus to become an alpha. And I think he's quite selective with who he turns. He probably only turns people who he believes, you know, can actually benefit his cause. And I'm really keen to see Zeus's motivation. Anyway, it's cool. We see, like, these tubes and medical stuff hanging off Zeus. Almost looks like ECG plasters that they've had on him, which would be pointless. I doubt he's got a heartbeat. But, uh, yeah, it's just pretty cool to see. And uh, he looks like he's got a fresh fade, too. The soldiers in the truck of the convoy did mention that, you know, there was a secret hangar and they were doing an autopsy. So I really wonder what they were doing to Zeus. You know, who was he before? Was he this soldier that was getting court-martialed or strung up for something? And they thought, fuck it, we'll just use him for this experiment with this alien goop we have lying about and see what happens and this is the result yeah i I think it's going to be something like that to be honest anyway we see these guys turn and when they sit up they make those invasion of the body snatchers kind of you know howls and then we see zeus walk over this ridge and look upon las vegas before he makes it his home and as uh, he's actually coming over this little ridge we see more lights once again up in the sky to me these don't look like stars they're far too you know purposefully placed and I think they're just too big and flaring too much to be stars Uh, so I do feel like that could be more UFOs and also this pyramid that's just shining up into the sky surely that's got to mean something you know pyramids aliens you know pyramids shining up to the sky it's all tying in right I'm not crazy I don't know I just reckon it's definitely aliens that have caused this Anyway, after this, this is when Viva Las Vegas hits in, and I didn't really like the rendition they used for this. I don't know, the tone just felt a little bit off in places. It starts off very camp and very funny, and I did quite like it. It's a little bit like Zombieland, pretty much, their their opening credits. Uh, 
we see some people being chased by like you know strippers and like performers and stuff like that we see a guy getting absolutely demolished in a bathtub the gore looks fantastic i'm not sure in this like you know pink font i don't know why they made it pink uh I don't know, they went for the kind of Suicide Squad look with the posters and stuff. I didn't mind it in the posters, but here, uh, I wasn't the biggest fan. The font itself as well, I, I think they might be paying homage to the older, like, kind of zombie movies and just older horror movies in general that kind of had font like this. But for this movie, I'm just not feeling it. I think they should have went with something else. To me, it just looks very Pink Panther instead of zombie. Like, I don't know. I, I just don't like it personally. But what I do like is the gore, the case chaos and the destruction. We see like this uh, policewoman just shooting uh, this stag do coming towards us. Uh, like one of them was limping but none of them were turned but she takes no chances and just shoots them all before she's then dragged away herself. And then we see this awesome explosion of this car and you can actually see Zeus just walking through it as he just absolutely tanks it. It doesn't affect him at all so man's must be pretty heat resistant as well. And as we get closer to him we really do see how how gnarly and charred up his skin in uh, his skin is man's needs some moisturizer he's looking crusty as hell but yeah you know this the, the actor that plays zeus is the same guy who played big daddy and ghosts of mars loved him in that i reckon i'm gonna love him in this I, I think he's gonna be my favorite character to be honest and then we see him look up at the olympus hotel and the statue of zeus you know just a hint to the name that he has in the script and the credits then we get this awesome shot and I love seeing stuff like this. I love seeing the initial outbreak of zombie outbreaks. The My favourite part of uh, Dawn of the Dead, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, was definitely the suburban scene where she jumps out her bathroom window and just, uh, you know, the camera just like pans around the whole neighbourhood and you just see that absolute pandemonium. Uh, I love that. And seeing this like bombing run of these army planes come in and just bombing the shit out of Las Vegas hitting all these hordes below it just looks epic and I want more and more of that then we just kind of see everyday normal people you know fighting back against the zombies as they become members of the last vengeance team we get these cool little kind of mugshot photos of them I don't know how they had time to take those in the middle of a you know zombie apocalypse but yeah whatever uh then we also see uh a bunch of zombies getting hit by the uh phony eiffel tower as it lands on uh one of the elvises unlucky elvis and we actually see omari hardwick going hard with his buzzsaw in this he actually cuts some people out of a car but then the woman who's also part of last vengeance that's with him realizes they're bitten and she has to shoot them and we actually see the toll this takes on her as she She's then down in some what looks to me like Jack Daniels and I like seeing that, I like seeing the emotional toll that crazy situations like this have on people, I feel like it's something that zombie movies skip over a lot and it's something you only really get in stuff like Walking Dead but I really do like seeing that psychological toll that crazy, crazy events like this have on characters. Because let's be honest, in real life, this shit would really, really fuck you up. You would have PTSD for the rest of your days. Then we get a mugshot of oh, Mary Hardwick's character, Vanderho. Uh, he's got a picture of him accepting his philosophy degree. So it's just kind of showing you, you know, anyone can become a zombie killer when the chips are down. Then we see the most unluckiest man in all of Las Vegas. For some reason, they reckon dropping paramilitary troops in is gonna help I, I i don't understand this when we can just drop bombs but uh they drop these guys in obviously he was meant to aim for a rooftop i'm reckoning but he just falls into a horde of zombies and is slowly lowered to his death like the cow in jurassic park into the fucking velociraptor uh, enclosure uh so yeah he goes down and it's kind of cool to just see the blood spray hit the parachute uh we don't see what happens to him but you know you can put it together with just that in your imagination then we see a little bit of the uh, refugee camps where Theo Rossi's Burt Cummins character works at. He's one of the guards here. You can see everyone getting hosed down by people in like hazmat suits and stuff. And this is just, you know, the early warning signs of how badly people are going to be treated who have come out of Vegas. Uh, you know, they're going to be stuck in this camp for quite some time. We then get, uh, see uh, Scott Ward, Dave Batista's character, going hard, saving this chick from uh, all these uh, soldier zombies as more zombies burn in a store behind him. And it's just a really cool shot. He just like 
clips one, kicks another one, holds with his foot, shoots that one, turns around, shoots another. It's just really cool, you know. Zack Snyder just knows how to capture cool parts of action, and that's probably what I'm looking forward to most in this, the gore and the action, because it looks fantastic from these opening credits. We also see, you know, a mugshot of Scott with his daughter Kate, played by Ella Purnell, and someone else in there who I'm guessing his wife, uh, who probably dies in this outbreak or is already dead as we don't see her any other time in any of the trailers and we haven't heard about her being credited in the cast or anything like that. Then we get a badass introduction to Cruise. We see their uh, taco uh, bell kind of truck there that they've fashioned into a zombie killing vehicle. Uh, you know, it's getting kind of hectic. Scott's trying to save someone. So she jumps on this big turret with a t-shirt that says ejaculation on it. I don't know what it says above it, but I, I'm sure it's going to be funny. But she just absolutely rips these zombies. Like the zombie stand in the bonnet is just turned into absolute mushed up watermelon. There's just fucking bits and pieces flying everywhere. And yes, 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 more of this, please. This is what I was expecting. This is what I want from the whole movie. Shots like this, set pieces like this, zombies just being blown and torn the fuck up. It's going to be sick. Yes, Zach, give us this, please. Then Cruz gets her own mug shot. We see that she's like a successful mechanic. As we know, that's kind of what she does. That's her thing. So, you know, she's going to come in handy when it comes to fashioning, you know, weapons and stuff onto vehicles and shit like that. She's going to be very handy with all that kind of stuff. Then as the opening credits kind of come to a close, we get a little bit more emotional. One of the last Vengeance uh, members finds her daughter. Uh, more on that later, it doesn't end too well, uh, but then we move on to the soldiers and we can see them being overrun, and as you can see here, they're mostly shambles attacking them, but you do get that one alpha in the back who's jumping on top of people, really breaking their lines, and it's really the alphas that, you know, keep shit hitting the fan, I think if it was just shambles, the army would have all this covered, the last vengeance would have this covered, but the alphas are the ones really keeping things going. And as we do know, alphas aren't as common, so they're a little bit of a myth, so no one really believes in them, or has just heard stories about them, but hasn't actually seen them. So obviously when our characters venture back in to Las Vegas for the heist, these alphas are going to be a surprise to them. Apart from Nora Aranzender's character, Lily the Coyote, who, you know, hangs about in there and lives in the wall, so she kind of, she's more knowledgeable of the area. Anyway, we see that soldier, that poor, poor soldier, calling in an airstrike right on top of him with that blue smoke because going out in a big explosion is probably better than being eaten alive by that many zombies. Like, there would be nothing left. Then right at the end, this is really cool because I was wondering this ever since we were told that Las Vegas is blocked off with shipping containers. Like, fuck, like, how many cranes did they have going at once? How fast was that guy working to build this wall? Uh, it looks like a few zombies might like get through here or there, but it looks like he gets it up pretty fast as we see him putting in that last piece of the wall. And as he does that, uh, we've got Last Vengeance coming through, trying to get through. Uh, and as they are getting through, uh, one of the members and her daughter, that woman member that we've seen before, uh, they get caught by zombies and kind of pulled back. You can see Scott and uh, Cruz trying to get to them, but other people stopping them because it's too late. And then, boom, the crane driver drops the shipping container right on top of them and the zombies. And that is that. The wall is built. The camera pans up to welcome us to the fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada before we are met. With the horde of hordes, just this massive horde of zombies stretching as far as the eye can see right through Las Vegas before we cut to black. And that ends the first 15 minutes of Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. So big takeaways from this, I don't like the dialogue from the start. Uh, the whole kind of start sequence to me feels like a low budget YouTube horror SCP type film. Uh, and I think that was just down to the acting and delivery of the dialogue that wasn't great in, a, in, on, in all honesty to start with. But the makeup effects, the sound design and the actual cinematography all looks and sounds good. So I'm happy with that. The music sounded good as well. Uh, the opening credits themselves, yeah. They're fine. Like, I've seen a lot of people going absolutely bonkers for these opening credits. I wouldn't go that crazy. I think they're pretty good, but 
you know, it's just kind of similar to Zombieland. I like the emotion at the end, uh, but everything before that was just kind of meh, you know? Like, I, I'd rather just see action rather than seeing it slow motion during credits, if that makes sense to you. I've never been a huge fan of opening credits or anything like that. Uh, Zack Snyder does do some good ones. For me, the Watchmen opening credits is probably still better. Uh, I really like them. But uh, yeah, here, right at the end of the little bit of emotion that we see from that, that tells me that this movie is going to have heart. And I want to see more of that. I want to see more of characters being affected by what has happened in their past. And I want to see them affected by what happens in the present when they do go on this heist. And I want some emotional depth to them. And I believe we're going to get that because we've heard uh, Dave Bautista say that, you know, he wouldn't have taken it if uh, he wouldn't have taken the role if it didn't have that. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the acting from you know the main cast of the little we've seen of them they look a lot better already than the soldiers from the start so I still have high hopes for the rest of the movie I just thought that this opening 15 minutes was a bit of a mixed bag you know it was half and half there was some good stuff there was some shit stuff uh, but yeah still really hype still really looking forward to Army of the Dead Roll on next Friday. I can't wait for this thing to hit Netflix. I wish I could see it in fears, but I can't. Let me know in the comments down below what you made of it. And uh, like this video if you did enjoy this. Uh, so it's like 4am right now as I'm recording in Australia. So I'd really appreciate a like for the effort I'm putting in here. Also, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to join the club and keep up to date with all your horror goodie content. As always, thank you very much for watching and good night.